Hey everyone, how's it going? Um, I have another tutorial video for you today. This one will be about how to do close air support working with the JTAC um, and what the nine line is and how to use that. Um, so this one is evidently going to be in the F-16. You can also do this in pretty much any aircraft. Uh, the method of inputting the MGRS coordinates, the grid coordinates that you're going to get from the JTAC is a little different in each aircraft. So I'll show you the whole cast procedure in um, the F-16, and then I'll probably do some other videos on how to input the MGRS coordinates and some other aircraft like the Hornet, because it's a bit different. But the first thing we are going to talk about is the nine line. So as you may have guessed, there are nine lines of information that gives you plus the remarks and the types. Um, so we'll go through the types first. There are three um, control types, which is one, two, and three. Type 1, the JTAC has to see the target and the attacking aircraft, and they are going to be controlling each individual attack. Um, so this is typically going to be used if you have some like language barrier or something else where you really want to make sure that everybody's on the same page and you want to um, eliminate the possibility as much as possible of um, friendly fire or hitting any civilians or anything like that. Um, so this, so it's also typically used in danger close scenarios. When, if you don't know what danger close is, it's... Um, it's basically an airstrike or something that's within 600 meters of a friendly position. Now, type two, um, the JTAC can't see the target or can't see the attacking aircraft or doesn't have to see, only needs to see one of them. Um, and they'll so if they can't see the target, they might get the info from someone else, like a drone or something that's awarding or scouts or special forces or something else like that. And then they're responsible for controlling um, the, uh, the aircraft that are operating and doing their close air support mission and they'll give off the information to those aircraft. Um, so this might be used um, in at night or in bad weather or high altitude or if standoff weapons are being used so they can only see one of the um, either the target or the attacking aircraft at one time. Um, and the JTAC is also going to be having to clear individual attacks. Um, uh, type 3, the JTAC doesn't have to see the target or the attacking aircraft. They can clear multiple um, attack runs in a single engagement, um, and but they will typically, not in DCS because this is a little bit limited in DCS, but in real life they would provide um, targeting restrictions like geographical boundaries or final attack headings, specific target types, etc. Um, so that you're, you can attack multiple targets on your own, but you are... Um, but there are certain restrictions and parameters that that has to be within. Now, the template, I'll just go through what this is, what it means, then we'll get in, we'll talk to the JTAC, and then we'll get the information. I would recommend if you have um, subtitles off, then you turn those on for the radios and things just so that you can see it and write it down more easily because they go through it quickly. That being said, I have them off, um, but I did this as a practice before, so I have them written down anyway. Um, but anyway, the template for our nine lines. So the first thing we have the IP, which is the um, initial point, which is where the aircraft starts their cast run from. Two is the heading, which is bearing from the IP to the target. Three is the is the range from the IP to the target in meters. Um, in DCS, one, two, and three, because the IP is typically um, pre-briefed, and the JTAC in the game can't know that where that is. Um, They'll just say one, two, three, and A, as you'll see once we get into this. Um, but anyway, the next things, the more important ones for us. Four, target elevation. They'll give you that in feet. Target description, which is typically, um, it can be simple or it can be detailed. It's usually kind of simple in this, so they might just say tank. Um, again, as you'll see in a few minutes. Um, six is the target location in MGRS coordinates. They'll give you six or eight grid coordinates. Um, in DCS, typically eight. Um, but you'll see when we enter our MGRS coordinates that we have to enter 10, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute, but you'll just be putting a, tacking a zero on to the end of whatever they gave you. Um, and the next thing will be mark type, which is either smoke or laser or an IR or a strobe or something like that to illuminate the target and show you or point out where the target is. Um, and then eight is the location of friendlies, which will give you cardinal directions. So, you know, north, south, east, west, etc. cetera. Um, and the distance from the target to those friendlies. And then they'll give you the direction to egress. Um, and then the last thing will be remarks, which they'll give you the type of weapon they want you to use um, and any other information like wind or something like that. Um, so we will come here. We will get into a little orbit here and we'll start talking to our JTAC. 
Respond. So it says type 2 in effect, advise from ready for 9 line. So we'll say ready to copy. So we will now go ahead and put in our, um, well, we'll copy our remarks first. Ready to copy remarks. Request GBU-31, wind zero, six, two, at three meters per second. All right, so we're going to be using our GBU-31 on this tank that's there. So now to put in our MGRS coordinates, first thing we're going to do is we're going to press four on our ICP to get to our steer point page. Um, for the coordinate conversion, for, or for the, to be able to convert the coordinates and to put in our MGRS coordinates, we can only do that in the Viper um, on steer points 21 through 25. So you can use uh, this switch here, the rocker switch, to get up to 21, or you can just type in 21, enter. Then we're going to do our dauber switch right. Takes a couple seconds. You can see this has popped up in our, um, our MGRS page. So... The first thing that says grid 31 November, um, what we're going to do is we're going to come into the F10 map, or you can check this in the mission editor if you made the mission beforehand. Um, cycle through the different types of coordinates. We're going to do left, alt, and Yankee. I'll just get back through here until we get to this one, which is our MGRS chords. And you can see the first number here is 36 Romeo. So that's the grid that we're going to be operating in. Um, and then you can also see that each one of these different grids is different. So we have like uniform tango, and then we have tango tango, and so on and so forth. Um, so we will come down here. We will do 3, 6, enter. And then you can see it's highlighting the end there, the November. So we'll just um, go up with the rocker switch until we get to Romeo. Press enter. The grid square that we're in now is going to be tango tango. So we'll press enter. Highlights the first one. And we're just going to cycle through this until we get to our T here. Enter again. Get the second one. And T. Now our coordinates were 97165677 is what we got from our JTAG. But because we need five numbers for each thing, we're just going to add a zero onto the end of that. So we'll do 97160567. Enter, go down here, it was at 70 feet, then we'll go back up to here to convert, press enter, and then we can switch to air to ground mode, turn our laser on, we don't really need that because we're using a JDAM, turn our JDAM on, that or set that as soy rather and then I just did um, TMS down and that slaved our T-Pod to our new waypoint or a new steer point rather we'll just get under these clouds so we can see it because we're going to want to visually identify this as well we're going to head to the north over here nine line readback forgot to do that And additionally, if you need to ask them what those coordinates are again, you can say repeat brief and it'll go through and it'll repeat the nine line and then you can have another chance to write it all down. So we're just going to be heading over here to the north real quick. We'll get into burner so it goes a little faster. Actually, I won't. But we can also use our T-Pod. We can find that target. That's a T-72B. 
fine tune that a little bit. TMS up, get a point track on that. I'm trying to head to the north because I know that our JTAC is to the north. It does it doesn't really matter, but they want us to egress to the south, so easier to go in a straight line than to have to do some weird turn. Um, they won't always give you, um, I think they typically do in DCS, will give you a, a direction to egress in, um, but in real life they might not always, and you can do that at your discretion, whatever makes the most sense for any obstacles, any terrain features that might be in the way, like a mountain for instance. But we'll just keep coming over here. And once we say IP inbound, a few seconds later they'll put smoke on that target, the Willy Pete, as I said, which stands for white phosphorus. Um, you'll get a white smoke cloud, which we'll be able to see from the air, and then they'll give us a direction from that to fine tune us onto that target, but that coordinate, that it, the coordinates they gave us were very accurate, so we were able to see it right away. Start turning onto the target now, and we'll say IP inbound. One, one, IP inbound. One, one, continue. Mark is on the deck. Oh, you see that? You can say contact the mark. Contact the mark. From the mark, southeast 70 meters. One, one, in from the north. Time was a little bit off. One, one, cleared hot. Pickle. You can see that white phosphorus there as well. And our bomb is on its way down there. I would definitely not want to be in that tank that first gen contact one ERA is not going to protect against the 2,000 pound JDAM. Alright. One, one. No further tasking available. Good job. You may depart. So that was our only target in the area, so they said no further tasking available. If there were other targets, they would then um start giving you the next target and you could write that one down, you could go through the same procedure, and then you could go and hit some more targets. But that's the only one that we have here today, so we'll RTB now. Or we won't RTB, but we'd stay in the airspace. Um, anyway, hopefully this was helpful to you. Um, CASA can definitely be, um, definitely be pretty fun. It can be a little bit tricky, but I always find it kind of fun to do. Um, I find it a little tricky to set up missions for it sometimes because I'm not very good at using the mission editor. But anyway, um, hopefully you found this helpful, informative, maybe entertaining for some unknown reason. Um, if you have any further questions, comments, etc., um, if I did something wrong, said something wrong, um, you know, let me know in the comments. I'm trying to learn as much as I'm trying to teach. So, um, but anyway, I hope you have a good one, and I hope I'll see you in the next video.